if you give the slave the money, if you give a donation to Ruvain's slave, and you say, I'm restricting this, I'm only giving it to you on condition your master doesn't take it. So according to Rebbe Mayer, you can't do that. That doesn't matter. The, your statement is irrelevant. Gemara says, low club. Okay. But according to the Chachamim, depending on how you word it, the condition can work. So we're doing Verabelazar Aimer, he says, call ki hai gavna, whenever the master makes a stipulation. Now, when the person giving the money. I'm sorry, when the donor Don't. makes a stipulation that I'm not giving you an unrestricted gift. I'm handing you this money. But the only incidence of ownership in this money that I'm granting you is the right to give it to your master to emancipate yourself. So it's not really his money. He can't, in the first stipulation, you're giving him the money, period. You're only stipulating the master can't take it. Here, you're stipulating a very narrow requirement. The only reason you're holding this money is so you can hand it to your master to free yourself. It, you cannot do anything else with that money. So that was, that was the issue here before. So now, Rebelezi Oymer, call Kihai Gavna. Whenever the donor says the master cannot have any use of this money, cannot take this money, the kula alma lo pligi, the kane eve, the kane rabi. A normal stipulation, <coughs> like he can't take it, is meaningless, and the master does get it. And what is this special case? We're saying that the mana is stipulated only for the purpose of the manumission. Rabbi Meir Savar Ki Amar Hai Kane Kane Evid Bekane Rabbi. Rabbi Meir says, I don't care. Even that stipulation doesn't work, and the master gets the money. I said earlier, any stipulation is invalid, and even this very narrow stipulation is invalid. But they say over here, here the stave is not really getting the gift. It's not, in other words, it's not going to the slave so it passes through to the master. Here all he has the right to do with it, here the only right the slave has in this money is to hand it to the master and to, to go free. So what we've effectively done is we've narrowed the gap between his money and the other guy's money because the other guy's money, it, it's only his money for that unique purpose. Okay, now we're going to say in the next Brysa, we're going to attempt to challenge the positions both of Reb Mayer and the Rabbana. So some little bit of background. Number one, remember the, a wife is, quote, owned, unquote, by her husband. Most of the women don't know that. They think they own us. But that's the halacha. So the giving of money to the wife means it goes to her husband with the narrow exception of nichsei mulug. That's rule number one we got to remember. 
Rule number two we've got to remember is there's such a thing as Meiser Shane, which has to be eaten in Jerusalem. Now, if you live 200 miles away from Jerusalem and you have a huge farm and you've got 10,000 uh, containers of grain, so round numbers, 1,000 of them is my Shane. It's not because you took off Truman and my Sirishim first, but let's round. Now, it's not practical to hire a tractor and drag all this stuff to Jerusalem. So the Chazal gave us a loophole. You can transfer the value of that and the caduceus of, of uh, Meiser Shaney onto money. So if you are, in my example of 10,000, let's say they're worth uh, a buck each. So you would transfer it to $10,000, except if it's Ruvain's Meiser Shaney, and Ruvain says to me, I can't take this to Jerusalem. And I say, well, how am I going to either? So I put up the money. In other words, I am paid the Meiser on my money. Then it's dollar for dollar. So the $10,000 worth would be on new $10,000. And I go to Jerusalem and I make a wedding or I make a bar mitzvah party for my kids so that everybody eats from that $10,000. But if Ruben does it himself, he has to put up $12,500. He has to add a fifth, but the fifth is based on the New total. So in practical terms, he has to add 25%. Okay? Now, when you combine all of this, how can, if a woman is put on behalf of her husband, is she a person or is she a shliach of her husband? And we're going to go into that right now. Okay? Rami, the Rebbe Mayor, we have a contradiction in the Bryser we're about to read to what we've all just recently learned in by Rebbe Mayor. It contradicts each other. The uh, the Rebbe Mayor and Rami Rabbanin are the Rabbanin, and the next Bryser also seems to be contradictory to what we learned from the rabbis heretofore. Desanya, we have a Brysa. Ain Isha Paydeh Meiser Shani Belochamesh. A woman cannot redeem Meiser Shani without adding the fifth. Her husband's Meiser Shani. Yeah. So this assumes that she's part and parcel of her husband. And it's no difference if he did it himself or if she did it as his agent or as part of him. For Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar, I mer mishum Rabbi Meir. Isha pay de meiser sheni below chamesh. The woman can 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 do the dollar for dollar. She doesn't have to add the twenty five percent, which we call a fifth. So just a minute. That seems to be country. That's Reb Mayer. But before Reb Mayer says that a woman can't, a slave, meaning also a woman, can't own anything. So she's part of her husband. How can she do it without the fifth? Kate said, dummy, what are we talking about? If we're saying that in a normal circumstance, the, fa- the husband owns the grave. And the husband owns the money. She the bulk of the. All she's doing is acting as his agent, and obviously she has to add the fifth. Ella day. What if we say it's her money? Now she can own money if it if her grandfather left her the money. 
If her grandfather left her money, she can. it's her money. She has to invest it and her husband gets the principal or gets the profits from which he invested. But now she's using her own money. So let's now, what, what, what happens in that circumstance? Ish amarachmana v'loisha. The Pasuk says when a man redeems he pay, his own, he pays the fifth. So Mistama, you could argue, the woman doesn't pay the fifth because she's not a man. Okay? So therefore, if that's the case, she does not add the fifth at all, under whatever circumstance, if you take that leeway. So in any event, you got the Rebbe Mayor on Rebbe Mayor, and you got the Rabbanan on the Rabbanan. Ella Love. So what do we have to be talking about? Ki hai governor, the case has to be as follows. The Akinela Somebody gave a gift of a hundred dollar bill to this lady. The Omerla Almanas Shetifti Ba Esamiser. And he said, The only thing you have permission to do with this money that I'm handing is use it to redeem your husband's miser, okay? And therefore, to the extent that you're using it to redeem your husband's miser, it's not his money, and you don't have to add the fifth, okay? So now, the Tanakama seems to... All right, so we have the same situation as before, but now the opinions are reversed. So the Gemara tries the normal how the Gemara gets out of these conflicts answer. We learned the opposite. We, we, we just did that. So you know what? It's very simple. Switch the opinions in this new Brysa. So now they're consistent with the previous. Rava Omerli Ilam Lote you do not have to switch the opinions. We can resolve it a different with a little analysis. We're talking about where she inherited the miser. She, her grandfather or her father died and she inherited the field and her husband plowed the field. And, and now this miser has to be taken on her inheritance. Okay, the Rebbe Mayor Latime, the Amr Miser Mum. Okay, a new thing we need to know. Who owns Miser Shane? That's a machlokas. One opinion is that the ba- everybody who had, takes Meister Shane, that it's as if he gave it to the base of Mikdash. And the base of Mikdash gives it back to him, Al Menas Eichel So you have the right to eat the Meister Shane you produced in Jerusalem, but it's really not yours. And that's where that fifth comes in, because if you put it from Beis Amikdash, you have to pay the extra fifth. The other opinion is, no, you own it. And this is a unique rule, and you own it, and you eat it, and you do what you want with it. And it's just a, a chiddush that you pay the extra fifth. Okay. So, the Rebbe Meir Latime. And Reverend Mayor is going according to his own view. The Omar Meiser Mamun Hektesh, who that the value of the Meiser is really Hektesh's property. The law can label, and therefore the husband, since the woman's Meiser Shani that she inherited from her grandfather is really doesn't belong to her. It's only in her possession. It really belongs to Hektish. So then her husband has no claim on it. Okay? And therefore, she doesn't pay. uh, He doesn't. And because she's a woman, she doesn't pay the fifth. 
but the rabbis hold differently. The Omer Momen Hedyot, that my Sushani belongs to the person who harvested it. Okay, and therefore, Vakane Lebal. And therefore, the, since the husband has the right to the fruit of any land the woman inherits, this Maisa Shani becomes her husband's Obal Ka'avda. And therefore, she, by taking true Maisa Shani from this pile of grain, is it's her husband's grain. She's not using her husband's money, and she's because everything she has is his in money too, and she's acting as his agent and has to add the fifth. Okay, so that just took care of that. So we started with, "Hey, I got a price that it doesn't work," and we resolved it. Yes, it does work, and now we're going back to slaves. Tanya Yetse Vishen the Ayan Berosha Vorim Sheenan Kozerim. There is a halacha that if you damage your slave, an avid canine, if you damage your slave, I would say a Jewish indentured servant, whenever I say slave, it means slave, unless I mess up. When you damage your slave, the Pesuk states, if you poke out his eye or knock out his tooth, he goes free. We infer from that, and we're going to do the, the, the drusha inside, that it adds on 24 other things. The last digit, we'll call it the tip of each of 10 fingers, that's 10. Each of 10 toes, that's 20. Ears, 22. Nose, 23. And in the case of a male, his aver. Okay? So if you damage them, me and it and the standard is you damage something where now its utility is diminished or re, or destroyed, and it doesn't grow back. So, for example, you cut off your slave's beard, it grows back. Okay, so that's the rule. Bish It's I understand why the pasuk why you're. It damage his eye or his tooth because it's specific, it's stated in the Pasuk, no equivocation. How do I know the tips of the fingers, ears, toes, etc.? We make a heck of a comparison to, to eye and to, tooth and eye. Ma shen ve Mumen shebegiloi the einan chazrin. What is a commonality of Shane and I? Both of them are considered a mum. If a kohen had has a missing tooth, or a kohen has a missing eye, he can't do a vayda. That's called a mum. And teeth and eyes do not regenerate if they're adult teeth. Okay, so now we look around the body and we try to find body parts that are parallel to those two rules. Uh, and I'm sorry, another part is giloy, it's visible. Okay, mumen giloy, a visible mum, which would exclude, for example, a mum on your belly. Now, why aver? That's a little bit of an issue. Mumen should be giloy vien and chatsrin, and they do not grow back. That's the parallel. The aima, but let's say rather, now a new rule. If you have the exact same halacha stated in two psukim. One of the rules of exegesis is you cannot take it further. 
Okay? If it says over here, uh, you can't cook on Shabbos, and it says over there, you can't cook on Shabbos, you could not extend it to warming on Shabbos. I'm not, that's just a strange example. All right? So, the aim of the the iron to snake subim haboyim kiechod. So let what about the issue that I is mentioned in one pasuk, tooth is mentioned in another pasuk, and they both come to teach the halacha that the slave goes free. So how that means you, if that principle applies here, you would not be able to extend it to fingertips and earlobes, etc. And whenever you have two psukim that bring the same halacha, the rule is you can't expand it by doing a limud. So three, so that that's when it's gratuitous, sort of. But sricha, in this case, you it couldn't have been only one. You needed the two. So you can't say the rationale for the second time is to teach that you can't expand it. Sricha, we need it. Why? The e cause of Rahmana Shane, if it only taught two, Hava Amina, I would have said Afilo Shane the Khalab. I would have said even a baby tooth. Because when and the baby tooth is regenerated, you're not got a baby tooth, and a grown up tooth comes later. Kasav Rahmana Ayin. That's why the Torah taught I, because if you poke out an eye, it never comes back. The E Kasav Rahmana Ayin, if the Torah only taught I, Hava Amina, Ma Ayin, Shinivra Imoi. The what is un, a uniqueness of the eye is it's there when the baby comes out of the womb. The eye is created at the together with the baby. Af kol shenivra imo. We could only give this damage it, and the guy goes free. Rule with things that are part and parcel of his body at the moment of birth. Abel shane lo, but tooth not. The baby teeth take weeks or months to, to, and some of them years to come in. And then the adult teeth follow that. So maybe it would not include teeth. So Tzricha, you had to learn both. And therefore, they're not teaching the same law. And therefore, you can learn new things. The Ema Ki Yika Klau. So now we're going to go through Limud analyses. Let's say ki yikach if you damage if you hit is a generality is a cloud. Shane the ayin is a prat. Shane tooth or eye is a narrow is a individual specific thing. That's a prat. Klalu prat. So now you have klalu prat. And the rule is, you can't do anything into the, put anything into the general case, except things that are just exactly like Shane Ba'ayin. Shane Ba'ayin and Midea Harina Lo. So there's nothing else that's exactly like a tooth, and there's nothing else that's exactly like an eye. So now maybe the rule is he only goes free if you poke at his eye or bash out his tooth. So they we have so the Gemara says, no, you're misreading that pasuk. It's not a klalu prad, it's a klalu prad of klal, because at the end of the prasuk are two more words. The two extra words that toward the end of the pasuk come to be a new cloud. The generality is you send him away and he goes free. And we're also going to see that one of those words is superfluous. Okay. 
Klal of Prad of Klal. So now you have a Klal of Prad of Klal. Iata dan elika ein ha prad. So you can generalize because you have Klal of Prad of Klal, but you generalization is restricted to things that have similarities to the Prat. Okay? Maha Prat Shemiporash Mum Shemip Giloy the Ain Chosrin. Two characteristics common to tooth and eye is that they're Mumin, that they're three characteristics, that they're visible to others and that they do not grow back. Okay? Af kol mum and shibigiloi, so too any visible mum item, the einan chayzrin that doesn't grow back, and there you get the 24 other things. E mahapra mefurit mum and shibigiloi, o batal malach, so now we want to say there's an additional commonality. We're going to throw in it no longer works. If I poke out your eye, it no longer sees. If I bash out your tooth, it no longer bites. So it, you're adding it doesn't do its malacha da'ena chazan, it doesn't grow back. So now, af kol mumin shabi giloi v'yein chazer rubato malachtoi. And then also a new requirement now has to be, and it no longer functions. Al matanya. So why, if that's true, why? And there's all that are direct, right? You punch out his tooth. But now we're going to come on to a brysa that equivocates, okay? Al Matanya, what do we do with the following brysa? Talash bezakno vidildal bo etim. If you yank the slave's beard hard enough to destroy his jawbone, okay? The slave goes free. So wait a minute. Number one, what is that piece of jawbone over here? What's its function? And it's not visible. In other words, we have a, a, a brysa that refutes what we've been here to saying. So now we have to change the way we're looking at it because this is a good objection. We're going to do now and make it not Klalu Prada Klal, but a Reboy. And now, if it's a Reboy, it comes to it. If the, you have a Reboy, Miyut Reboy. So we start out, if you hit the slave and cause damage, he goes free anywhere. The pra, the, the miyut would be his tooth or his eye exclusively. And then he shall be said, go out and be free is a new reboy. So any permanent damage to any body part hidden or concealed, visual or concealed, Functional or dysfunctional would be included. The iriboy he, but if you're going to tell me it's a reboy that we're going, um, reboy miut reboy, then a filo ha kahu al yodo with some sa saifala chazinami. So then we have to look at immediate damage. If the master causes damage, say, to the slave's hand, and for a period of time the hand is dysfunctional, it, uh, Gemara uses the word uh, withered, but then it, he gets better. It restores itself. The doctor sets the bone, whatever it is. So later on his hand is good again. 
So that should meet the reboy rule. He did body damage to the slave. He should go free, but that's not so. Al Matanya, we have a brace that says, Hakahu al David Samsa, the Sophilachazir, if his hand is battered and it's uh, withered temporarily, but it grows, but he, he restores it to good health either not by itself or through the means of doctoring. Slave does not go free with a, temp- a transitory damage. What? Somebody asked a question? And so, what special, what limud, in other words, what's the function of the Pasuk listing eye and hand when it really includes many other things. So their specificity has to come to eliminate the notion of transitory. If I poke out your teeth and you're an adult, those teeth are never going to regenerate. If I poke out your eye, it will never regenerate. And therefore, we have to go to Klalu Prat of Klal, and we can't do uh, Ribui Miyut Ribui. All right. Tana Rabani. We're going to. These are automatic. If I knock out my slave's tooth, it's automatic. So, do we say that the Besden forces the master? the erstwhile master, to give him a star shikhrur? Does he have to get paperwork? Or when somebody says to him, weren't you Harry's slave? He goes, he shows his teeth that one's missing. And it said the raya is inherent in his body and he doesn't need documentation. Okay, that would be a little tricky if it's a lady and he has to show his aver. But be out as it may. So, Tana Rabbanan, and we're going to have a list of rabbis who say he needs, and a list of rabbis who say he doesn't need, and the problem is it's going to have the exact same number in each list, so we don't have a majority. Okay? Tana Rabbanan. V'kulam evid yaitzibahem l'cheirus any damage to any of these 24 four plus two, the tooth in the eye, 26 things, the slave goes free, Vitsurich get shikhrur, and he needs paperwork from his master, Divre Rib Shimon, that's Rib Shimon. Rib Meir, Aimer, Enutsurich, we do not need the documentation, that's one in one. Rabbi Lazar Omer Tzorich, he needs it. Rabbi Tarfin Omer Enet Tzorich, he does not need it. That's two and two. Rabbi Akiva Omer Tzorich, Vaha Machrihim Lifnei Chacham. Okay, so I'm sorry, maybe I left someone out, Rabbi Lazar. But it's, they're equal. There's, a, there, there's no determinant by number. So, the rabbis whose job it is to make the final psak when it's a psak is unclear, they say, Rabbi Tarfin makes sense when it's the tooth or the eye, because tooth and eye are explicit in the pasuk. And the onlooker sees the missing tooth, sees the missing eye, and you don't have to prove why you went free if you were the slave. Shatira Zachsalo, because the Torah gives him that freedom, it's explicit in the Pasar. But we agree with Rabbi Akiva Dibishari Barim with the other uh, qualifying injuries. Because that's a penalty to made up came that the rabbis came up with. 
Okay, so that means he needs documentation to prove his freedom. So Gemara says, Knas who? What do you mean it's Knas? Get out of here. Karel Darshinan. We, 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 we learned it out from explicating the Pasa. And that's just as much of the Arise as if it was explicit. So why are you telling me it's a Takan? Uh, it's a uh, Knas. Ella Hoilu Midrash Chachamim Hu. What we mean by it's a Knas is because that's a rabbinic derivation. And maybe there's somebody out there who doesn't buy it. We had a back and forth. You need it. You don't need it. And somebody will challenge this slave's freedom. So we sh- he shows has to show his paperwork. Okay. Now, what are the rationales of these different positions? So we wound up saying on tooth and I, he doesn't need and everything else he does need. Okay. Yalif. She luach, she luach me isha. Why does Reb Shimon say he needs it? Because we have the word she luach, he goes out, and we have she luach, she goes out when a man divorces his wife. Ma isha bishtar, the woman needs documentation, she needs a get. Af Evid Nami Bishtar, the slave needs a star shrurus. Reb Mayer, that makes a lot of sense. What about Reb Mayer? Where does he get the notion that you don't need it? Okay. E Kasav Khafshi Lesof Tibika Amart. If the last word was Khafshi, in the Pasuk, then you guys would be right, he says. But the Pasuk has the extra word, he should be sent away. So he's sent away first. In other words, he doesn't need paperwork. Tanarabant, new Brysa. Did you have a question, Mel? Tanarabani, another Brysa. He kohu al eno vesama. What if you hit your slave and damage his eye? So now it's he's sightless with that eye, but it's still there. Okay? Al osno vechersha. Or you poke his ear and break the eardrum base. So he physically still has an intact ear, but he cannot hear with that ear. The Bryson says that's bad enough. He gets to go free. Now what about if you indirectly damage the guy's eye or ear. The Gemara's example is he's standing over here and you take a hammer or something and bash the wall, making a loud noise. Like you go to a wedding with a band and the loud noise damages your ear, okay? Every, uh, so, neged no, he hits next to the ear, meaning hits the wall behind him, the ain uh, ain't, uh, the, uh, his eye uh, and the Aroa. And the guy goes into shock from the uh, un, the sudden unanticipated noise. And the net result is he has to, he can't see through that eye anymore. Okay? Neged Osno, or you hit to make a huge noise near the guy's ear, the Shomea, and the guy can no longer hear. Well, there it's a grammar. You didn't actually do it to him. You did it to the wall, and the wall caused him to have shock, and the shock is self-inflicted. He could have been more st- uh, stable, and therefore it's only a grammar. The ain't evid yaitzi behen guy does not go free. 
Amar Rav Shemin le Rav Ashi, Rav Shemin asks, says to Rav Ashi, Le Memra are what you're trying to tell me, the Kalalav Klumhu, that noise is meaningless. You know, that the effect on a person that noise causes is not to be considered. Vahatanai Rami Bayecheskel, but Rami Bayecheskel brings a brisa. Tarnigal, this is cute. Tarnigal, Shahumit Rosho La Avir Kaili. A rooster <laughs> sticks his head into a bucket. Okay? And or zechuches, or into a big glass jar, okay? V'tokabo v'shavro. And the rooster crows, and the sound of the rooster's voice breaks the glass. Okay? okay I can't wait to hear the rest. Mishalem nezek The owner of the rooster has to pay for the owner of the jar to get a new jar. Okay? Because that's direct and it's his property. Omer of Yosef, Omer of Beirav, but Rabbi Yosef says, they also teach in the base medrash, sus shitsonah, if the horse goes, whatever the horse makes noise, the chamer or the donkey makes donkey noise. The shavru kalim betochabayis. So you're driving by the Schwartz house on your donkey, and your donkey makes noise, and something in the Schwartz house breaks as a result. Mishalmim chatsi nezek. They pay half of the damage. It's not direct, direct. But it still directly caused the damage by the donkey. So we pay a compromise, you pay half. Okay? So what's going on here? How come if the master bashes the wall next to the slave and damages the slave's eye thereby, he doesn't go free? Amale Ravashi replies to Rav Shemin. Shiny Adam people are different than objects. The cave and Dvadas who e who be a person has a mind, and when he hears this loud noise, the loud noise didn't break, it didn't cause him loss of hearing. His brain in processing the noise. Cause the ear to be damaged. <laughs> so it's a grama. It's not direct or even indirect. I, I mean, I, in the sense of a little direct. It's completely indirect. It's a grama. That's why you can drive your scooter on Shabbos. Because it's a grama. You move the lever. It doesn't do anything. After a while, the machine makes the wheel go. So it's a grama, and you're not five shabbos, and we're going to prove that. Kedesanya, hamav is es chaveiro. If I try, you know, jump out from behind the wall and go boo, to Ruvain, putter me day, and Ruvain has a, you know, a, has a, a brain shock and falls down and breaks his leg. Potter midine adam Bezdin can't make me pay him the chayev midine shmayim, but God will measure it out, and Reuven will gain, and I'll lose in some other way. Okay, son. So how does that work? Talk about Azno the hair show. I scream into Reuven's ear, and he goes deaf. Potter. I didn't do anything to him. I made a loud noise next to him, just like banging the wall. And, uh, and I'm putter. It's a grama. However, 
if I grab Ruben by the arm and pull him to me so I can scream in his ear. And then I'm, while I'm holding him, I scream in his ear and I deafen him. Because now I did something directly to him. And it's a package and he's chayev. We still have plenty of time. I gotta get my arm um, okay. Okay. What? Stop. No, we're not stopping. I just had to pick up my arm um, okay. okay. So now we're gonna go into some like middle course cases. Tanarabanan, a new brisa. A kaho a Eino uba hasa. If I punch my slave in the face, and as a result, he's not blinded, but his eye is weakened. Maybe he has double vision, or maybe uh, the, the looking through that one eye, he can't read the letters on the eye chart. I'll say no vinodada. Or I punch him in the mouth and I loosen a tooth, but it is not detached. Okay. If the damage is not sufficient to preclude him, say, reading with that eye, or preclude him biting a piece of bread with that loose tooth, then ain evid yotzi behem lecheros, he does not go free. In love, if the damage is sufficient, even the tooth is not missing, but he can't bite with it, or the eye is weakened to the extent that he cannot, in a practical terms, See with it, even though he can make out, Rashi says, even though he can make out shapes. Okay, then he does, he does go for it. Another case. What if the slave already had bad eyesight and the master makes it worse by punching him in the eye? Tanya Iroch, we have another Brysa. Hare Shahoya Sa Eno Kehu Kehuya Vesima. If the eye was already weak, the guy was severely nearsighted, or the guy had cataracts, and the master punched him in the eye, and now the eye is totally blind. If the eye was not so that bad before the punch that the guy could use it, he could read, he could do his chores, he goes free. But if if he was so severely nearsighted, they didn't have glasses in those days, that he couldn't read, he couldn't, he needed somebody to help him cross the, you know, he needed a Boy Scout to help him cross the street. Okay. He does not go free. So why did we need both cases? Why did we need both cases? If we only had the first case where the master damaged him, he had good vision and he was now the damage. That initially his eye was perfectly good and now it's significantly damaged. But now it's damaged. But in the case where he was already significantly nearsighted, the 
his eye was already very weak. A malo, I would say maybe he doesn't get to go free. The e ashme in and hacha. If we only talked about the nearsighted guy who was punched in the eye, mishum de Samuel Agamri, because now he's completely blinded in that eye. Avul hasham, but in the first case where his eye was, his sight was diminished but not destroyed. The law of Samuel Agamri is not completely blind. Aim a low, I would say maybe he doesn't go free. So Tzricha, we need both examples, the prices, to show us what the rules are. Next, <clears throat> Tana Rabbanan, yet another price. This time, the slave works for a doctor. Okay? Hare Shahoyi Rabba Raifa. The guy, the master, is the doctor. Amr lo. The slave says to the doctor, I'm having trouble seeing. I want you to treat my eye. Literally, it means put colored gunk on my eye. Okay? Vesima. And as a result of the treatment, the doctor sometimes mess up. As a result, Bob knows about that. As a result of the mess up, the slave becomes sightless. Or supposing the doctor, the, the, the master is a dentist and the slave says to the dentist, I want you to scrape the tartar off from around my teeth by where the gums are. And the master presses too hard with uh, the, that pointy little piece of metal. And, and, and instead of scraping off the tartar, he rips out the tooth. Okay? In both cases, the slave laughs at the master and goes free. Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel Aimer, he says, V'sichato, the Pasuk says, now he disagrees. Rabbi Shimon, that was the Tanakam, that even though the slave requested the treatment, and even though the master was not intentionally harming him, like punching him in the eye, Nonetheless, the end result is blind eye, missing tooth, free. But Rabin Shimon men gamilaimer vishikata. The Pasuk says he did intentionally destroys it. Ad shitakavain la shachasa. The damage or in this case, the master has to be doing something that intentionally causes damage. When you punch somebody in the face, you want to hurt him. You're not giving him a love tap. You're punching him in the face. Here, the doctor was trying to help him. So Reb Shimon ben Gamliel says he does not go free. Rabbanan hai v'shichasa my avidlei. So what about the rabbis? What do they do with this pasuk? He has he damages him. Remember, if you don't use the pasuk and somebody else does, you have to come up with how you treat that pasuk. So miboy lahu kasanya, they use it for the following brisa. Rabbi Lazar Omer Hare. Okay. They serve it that the Canaanite slave girl is in the middle of labor and the baby is having trouble coming out. So they didn't have four sips. You stuck your hand in and you helped the baby come out. 
So the master sticks his hand in to help the baby come out and inadvertently pokes out the baby's eye. Okay? And the master, in trying to aid her birthing, pokes out the baby's eye. Put her. He's not responsible at all. My timer. The Amr Kra She Chasa. He has to want to cause harm. Ad She Yikavein the Shechasa, and he's only liable if he intentionally causes pain and knows he could do that to begin with or causes damage. The Edoch. So, but how does Rav Shimon know that the midwife does? You know, the the master midwife doesn't get penalized for for blinding the baby. Me the shiches shichaso nafka. He learns it from the fact that the word shiches shin ches tough would be enough. Shichaso with a mapik hey at the end. That's an extra letter that isn't absolutely needed for the meaning of the Paso. So he learns both halachas because of the extra head. The Edof, what did the rabbis do with the hay? Shichas, shichas, lo, zoresh. They don't interpret the extra hay. They think it's just there. Okay, we'll finish there. Have a great day, everyone. We'll continue tomorrow. Yes, Hashem. Thank you. You're welcome. I want you to know I did it all on my own. Because <laughs> Ruben didn't come. There is millions.